Hello, uh, we're going to talk about Chapter 9, which is on managing uh, Linux processes or Unix processes. One of the fundamental commands used in uh, managing Linux processes, of course, is or Unix processes, is the PS command. The PS command lists our processes. And we will go over here, um, actually over here, where I'm not root. And we will use the PS command to list our processes, just PS. Uh, this really doesn't do too much for us, because this only lists the sub-processes of, uh, well, the process I'm in and the sub-processes, which is just bash. And then when I execute PS, that forks another process called PS. And so I've got two processes. Well, that's kind of boring. Um, so I need to look at options I have on the PS command. You need to read the man page for the PS command. It's extensive. It takes some time to read. And it's one of those things you go back and read more of every so often, because there's a lot of good information in here. And uh, it takes a long time to really uh, well, I refer to it every now and then when I'm looking for a new format for the PS command because um, it isn't doing something I want it to do. Um, but the major formats that I use for the PS command usually are just PS and PS minus EF, which basically will print all the processes out. Um, in a nice little process table, along with, there's a header up here. This prints all the processes. See, not just the ones that dmandle owns, but also the ones that root owns and anybody else logged on to the system. It also types a little bit of the command they typed in. And I'll get back to that more later. And at the top of it, it gives a little header saying, this is the UID of the user. This is the process ID. This is the parent's process ID. Um, and these, these are time things, including the, I believe this is the amount of time it, that the program is actually executed. Um, and um, you can read the man page for details. Um, it's nice to have the parent ID, though, because basically when a parent, um, by default, unless there's an override, when a parent dies, the child process dies. So when you kill a process, um, you want to look and see if it's any, got any children that you don't want to die. Um, although, you know, don't look too well because Killing a process is a routine activity. Um, and we don't want you to be shy about killing processes. An another option I use on the PS command is PSAUX. And that basically just gives us a little more information about the process, um, uh, about the processes. In particular, it gives us information about their status. And uh, you can read the um, man page to tell what status these are, um, what the statuses are, and more information about the uh, start time of the process and the amount of time it's taken to run. Oh, percent CPU, percent memory, that can be very, very useful. Um, um, yeah. And um, so here we see we've got a command here that's taking up some actual CPU and memory. Uh, that's a um, um, Kwin, which is associated with the KTE windows. Um, yeah. Oh, there's a real hungry process. And what is that guy? FFmpeg. Well, FFmpeg happens to be the fellow that's actually making my video. And making videos is a very hungry process. So I would expect that to be using a lot of resources. That's 33, it's 36% or 36, yeah. Um, what, whoops, 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 whoops. Uh, percent CPU. So that's really burning through CPU. OK. Um, another thing that often, um, oh, another thing that you do with processes is 
um, you may want to start a process in the background. Suppose I want to start a new terminal or maybe an Emacs session. Let me start a new terminal, Xterm. If I put an amp, if I start it like this, it goes up here and I've got this process that's going up here. That happens to be a new process. I won't go through and look at the process tables, but it will be. Okay. Now I go back into this window down in the corner here, the one in black, and I go to type and I'll be darn, I can't use the thing. So I type a control C. The control C, of course, kills the process I just opened. That really is bad. Um, I mean, I that's not cool. So, however, if I put an ampersand after the command, it opens up a new process in the background. And this goes up here. So I can type commands up here. This goes down here. So I can type commands here. And that's cool. I've got a lot of places that I can type commands. Maybe I'll open a new process over here, Emacs. Um, well, let's put it in the background. And there I've got, I've got um, Emacs here. I can't type in this window because um, because I'm not in my home directory. I'm in some location where I just don't have any uh, access rights. There. This is a place where I can do something. Okay. Um, and I'll save that file because that looks like a good file. Well, that's kind of garbage, but you know. Um, I've got a tradition. Anything that starts with a TTT or TTTTTTT or uh, if it starts with a lot of T's, it's a junk file. So once in a while, I just go through and clean them all out. Um, okay. Now, let me go back up to this guy. I've got a window here. Um, I'm pretty much done with that. Let's kill this window. Okay, well, now I have to be careful when I kill that window because that was, the Emacs window is a child of that window. And be, by default, sometimes, often when I kill that window, the Emacs session will die. The child process will die. Fortunately, many commands have been written so they don't do that. So it's a little hard to predict when the child process will die and won't die. Um, but one does have to be careful because sometimes when you kill a parent process, the child process will die. There is a command that is supposed to help with that called no hip uh, for no hang up, um, x term, like this. And then supposedly, if I killed this process, that guy would not die. Well, let's see. Yeah, except I don't know if that actually worked because that may be the way the x the the x term that I opened is written. So I'm I'm actually not quite sure that did work. But no hip is something to try if you're having trouble with processes dying that you don't want to die. Um, I do give it with a grain of salt, though, uh, with mixed success. Um, okay. Well, we can kill these. We don't need them. Um, that tells us something about processes and the process command and background. Oh, I should say a little more about the background thing and the background command. I. Generally, uh, most of us nowadays, because we're using the graphical user interfaces and we've got screens all over the place and, and we've got multiple workspaces down in the corner here, so we can jump all over the place and we can open windows and windows within windows, I don't know. We've got lots of windows and lots of processes. So we're not so careful about our background process. We open lots of things in the background, but but we don't really keep track of them the way we used to. The reason background process were, or processes were originally 
um, um, developed and, and the way they were used is suppose you all you had was a old alphanumeric terminal. You were sitting at this alphanumeric terminal which would look just like our wi one window here and you could type commands into this guy here like uh, PS and WTTD and, and I p type in in those days when I typed in say my my big gimpy type command it would just bring up a a menu of options and stuff because it couldn't spin out another window because I didn't have windows. And in those days, if I started up some program that would take two months to run or to, um, you know, like a mathematical model that would take a little bit of time to run, um, maybe an hour or whatnot, that means I would be without my terminal, without any access to the computer for the next hour. I couldn't even read my email um, while this thing ran. And some of these would take a long time to run. So the tendency was I would put those into the background uh, like something like this, like sleep. Here, here's one. Sleep 60 echo. This is something. I think this will work. Um, I'm not sure of the syntax, but I think that will work. OK, and then I go on doing my own thing, all sorts of stuff. But someplace back here, there is a job in the background. Oops, jobs. Ah, there is a job running in the background there that is that job, and it will someday finish. And when it finishes, it will come back to my screen. And in the old days, that's the way I had to do everything. So I would be submitting these background jobs, and I'd be using jo commands like jobs to really monitor um, my background jobs. Whoops. Uh, there, I've got two jobs in the background now. Uh, see that? And um, I'll start up again. Uh, well, OK, I can't do that because the first command already uh, finished. And um, apparently, there was an error in the command. So it didn't process quite the way I wanted. But, um, but it came back, and it finished. So there's my command, which finished. It ran in the background. It came back. And of course, the command that has the new window open over here is uh, still processing. If I kill that, I type jobs. My job's all gone. And there were co there are commands for killing jobs and for doing all sorts of, uh, for managing my jobs. And at one time, we worried about that a good deal because we had such a limited access to the computer. Um, because we only had one window to work in. Today, we're much more sloppy about this. We don't use the uh, commands like foreground and background and, and some of the other commands ex uh, described in the book nearly so much. Um, actually, not at all, to tell you the truth. Um, OK. Now, the next thing I want to do is you heard those beeps. Those beeps are awful. And I'd like to kill the process associated with those beeps. So let me look at the way I might do that. Let's do process space minus EF space E. Um, and then we're going to pipe that guy into um, a grep. And we're going to grep for a command called totem. Um, except we are out of time. So we will come back with this command. Uh, we will come back with the rest of this in just a couple um, minutes here. And I will show you how to kill certain types of processes. OK? Be back in a minute.